Imagine if you could play video games for the first time in your life again. Everything you experience is new. Even the tiniest detail serves as an earth-shaking shock to the senses. You pick up that controller and man, the world just melts away. If you're looking to undergo some perspective-altering shit like that once more, I'd say look no further than Boneworks. I have to talk about Boneworks. What is Boneworks? Boneworks is a 15 hour mindfuck sesh with no Gatorade breaks. Boneworks is a roller coaster ride into your own fucking grave. Boneworks is what it feels like to chew five gum. I'm sorry, the use of that clip made no sense. I've just watched a lot of Sopranos lately. Boneworks is, simply put, one of the most mind-blowing games I've ever had the good fortune of getting my grubby little mitts on. When I first saw footage of this thing on YouTube back in, I don't know, 2018, I fully expected it to be good. What I did not expect was for it to quickly become one of my favorite games ever, like the second I picked that shit up. I hesitate to use the word revolutionary, it always comes off as a bit of an ostentatious descriptor to me, but honestly, Boneworks is the closest thing to revolutionary that I've experienced in a long fucking time. This shit made me excited to play video games standing up. And pro gamer to pro gamer, if that shit doesn't sell you, I don't know what the fuck will. Okay, but really though, to reassert the initial question, what is Boneworks? Why I'm glad you asked. It is a semi-linear, first-person, virtual reality, action, platformer puzzle game with a heavy focus on physics and full body immersion. It's got a very Half-Life kind of vibe. Imagine if you combine Half-Life with... Well, I guess it's just Half-Life. The story has you playing as Arthur Ford, a cybersecurity engineer adventuring through what is essentially an abandoned version of the Oasis from Ready Player One, but if the Oasis wasn't fully shippable and made in the 90s. The real life creators of this bonkers ass universe are Los Angeles based developers Stress Level Zero, a studio headed by YouTuber Brandon Lotch. And after playing this game, these people are now my personal game dev heroes. This title was made by like 20 fucking people. Jesus Christ, what am I doing with my life? The people over at SLZ are on the cutting edge of game development, and honestly, I am a little envious. But that doesn't even remotely stop their work from exciting me to no end. Why is that though? Why are you all here today? Why is the video titled what it is? What is it about Boneworks that gets my bones? All hot and steamy. Here's a 30 minute answer. A body and a world. There are a lot of things I could start with when talking about Boneworks, mostly because everything about it is fantastic and I could talk about any given little thing for like 9 hours until you're begging me to stop and inevitably end up bashing my brains in while crying out in agony because you never asked for this burden, the burden of killing a man. Eventually, I decided to start with the core of what makes Boneworks work, and that is the work and bones on display, as you can see right here. These bones. Ford bones. Your bones. A key feature of what makes Boneworks stand out from the competition of other current VR titles is the fact that your character has a body. When you shift your head downwards, you see it. When you hold your hand up in front of you, you see an arm attached to a shoulder attached to the man-shaped virtual shell you are currently inhabiting. It might seem like an inconsequential thing, but having a full in-game body that for the most part realistically reflects your own real movements is of the utmost importance to Boneworks, as is the second part of this equation, the surrounding world, a world bound by a stringent dedication to physics. You have a body, and you have a world that reacts to that body. Magic. Fucking magic! The reactive body transports you to a different world, fully breaking the barrier of the screen in a way that I've never encountered. Even in the beautiful Half-Life Alex, I always felt a slight disconnect. I never felt like I had fully shifted dimensions into City 17 because of the little details, like the extremely linear nature of the game, or, hoppa, 
the floating hands. The same thing can be said about the majority of other VR games I've played so far. Gorn, Beat Saber, Super Hot, Stride, Walking Dead, well that has arms, budget cuts, job simulator, no bodies to be found. Nowhere. Blade and Sorcery is actually one of the games where the body- OH FUCK YOU MOVE SO FAST! Which leads to a whole new level of immersion as you step into the mind of a murderous medieval sex maniac who chops people's heads off, beats people's heads with those heads, and then throws them all in a well. I live here now. GOD THIS GAME FUCKS! Point is, and I'm reiterating at this rate, but thanks in part to its extremely well put together body, Boneworks BROKE THE BARRIER OF THE SCREEN! A feat only accomplished by the most profound and memorable of gaming things. I present to you the Psycho Mantis scene from the original Metal Gear Solid. When Psycho Mantis talked shit about your save games, he was talking directly to you. That game became real, undeniably, fully and completely right in front of your beady little child eyes. I felt that same rare, uncanny feeling throughout my time with Boneworks. I could touch the game. I could sense the wind rushing past me as I took massive leaps of faith. I could feel the kick of a handgun and the weight of a sledgehammer crashing down on these fucking crablets. Fuck you, crablets! So now that you got not only the hands, but the body, you gotta think with the body. Heart bodies. Body time. Let's go. Interacting with the world of Boneworks is different than any other game I've played. You have to think entirely differently when engaging with this shit because basic recognizable gaming actions like picking up objects, taking things out of your inventory, and reloading firearms are now all physical actions as opposed to button presses. This deeply detailed physical interactivity allows for so many different ways to solve problems. It's insane. Here's an example. Look at this door right here. At the end of this hallway, we have a door blocked off by a single piece of wood. And yes, I know this piece of wood isn't actually blocking the door, but I thought it was the first time I played and I stood here and I messed with the door for like 10 minutes freaking out because there was a no man on the other side just chilling. Just go with me here. At this point in a standard non-VR game of this sort, you know, a linear action adventure, you'd walk up to this locked door and think, okay, time to find a key card or a weapon and press E to pick it up and then I can come back to the store and click my mouse a bit and make my way through. In Boneworks though, you're given the tools to get much more creative than that. To really think with your head. And I mean that literally. Ram your fucking head through that door, you dumb bitch! Huh, guess I could just use my hands to rip off this wood plank? Yeah, I can. Could I maybe huck to a hundred fist rush my way through the next door? Yeah, actually, I fucking can. Cause I'm the dude from the raid too. Can I give an enemy a wet willy on my way through the door? Yes, uh... I don't, I don't know why, I don't think the AI was responding correctly at that point. You have to use your brain differently when playing Boneworks, because the game isn't just in front of you, it's all around you. You, you are, are the, the game, game. Oh my fucking god, he woke up! As a player, you can't just rely on your game design muscle memory here. Instead, you have to use your accumulated knowledge of physics, having spent a lifetime in the real world. It's like, when you're presented with a problem in this game, you don't think, huh, what have I done in other games that can inform this? No, you more so think, huh, what would I do here in real life? Because I'm here. Also, I can't get hurt from falling and I have no fear of death. Well, the big door is locked, so I'd probably just drag this box and climb in through the wind. Oh, and that fucking worked because this game is a masterpiece built by genius scientists. Again, that's just a different mode of thinking. A weird one that I've never had to shift into while playing a game. It's such a fucking unique experience. And like, sure, games have used physics and player choice in tandem before, for like decades now, but my whole body hasn't been involved before, and the intricacies of that perspective and how it's executed make a world of difference. A dimension of difference. <clears throat> Sidebar though, at this point I feel like a select few of you in the comment box might be saying, well what the fuck Charlie, isn't that just VR? Isn't everything you're describing innately a part of virtual reality by default? Isn't this highly physical interactivity you're praising Boneworks so heavily for just the main hook of virtual reality in every VR game? Is this the first time you've ever played VR? Are you a fucking baby dressed up as a skunk? Yeah, that is me as a skunk baby. I'm cute as hell. Look at these fucking rolls I got. My body is sectioned off into doughy tubes. How did I even function as a child? I don't understand. Oh, I guess I just rolled places. Well, to get back to that overlong question the box just asked in my head, the answer is kinda yes, 
but mostly no. Yes, because, well, yes, every VR game has the advantage of the added immersion of the medium, and they all reflect your real physical movements in the game world to some extent, but also no, because Boneworks takes advantage of the medium to a level that I haven't seen any other VR game really even strive for. Sure, you can pick up random objects in Half-Life Alex, but can you actually use that shit for anything other than appreciating the texturing and poly count? Could you stack up these nondescript boxes in order to reach a secret area, or could you use that trash can to nullify an enemy's attacks? Nope. But you could in Boneworks. Trust me, I fucking tried. It was hilarious. Stress Level Zero takes the innate interactivity and immersion of VR so much further than any other developer I've seen with a simple combination of a body, a world, and a dash of player freedom and nonlinear level design. Warehouse is the sixth level in Boneworks, but it's the first in my heart. Actually, probably second. It's my second favorite next to Streets. Maybe third, if Tower is number two. No, Warehouse goes in front of Tower. Here's a list of my favorite Boneworks levels from Best of Wars. I, I don't know, I'm not gonna explain it. So this next topic is something we technically already touched on about five seconds ago, but I'd like to continue that discussion by briefly zeroing in on Boneworks' fantastic level design and how player freedom interacts with that level design and the player experience as a whole. We're gonna be using the game's sixth level, Warehouse, as an example case, because as you saw on the list, it is dope. All right, so simplest terms. There's a big chamber, and you wanna get from one end of that chamber to the other. Intermediate description, there are two sections to this chamber. The first being the titular warehouse, and the second being a smaller building filled with weird ass shit. You start in front of the warehouse at the beginning of the level, and what the game wants you to do is walk around the perimeter of the building so you can find a battery, and then you use that battery to open the front door of the warehouse, proceeding through said warehouse until you reach a container thing that you gotta jump through to get to the second area. Be sure not to fuck your face up on the jump like I did. But, the path that I just described isn't the only way to get through Warehouse. If you're a clever player, you can skip walking around the warehouse entirely by just vaulting over this chain link fence at the start and grabbing the battery early. Or you could say fuck it, disregard the battery plan entirely, and just climb up the side of the warehouse, beanie that bitch with a brick. Or call back, you could do that shit I mentioned earlier about breaking into one of the front windows. The options here are fucking limitless with the in-game systems you're given to work with. All right, second part of the equation, player freedom. This is another thing I brought up earlier, and also something Brandon himself tweeted about recently, so it's been covered before, I'll keep it short, but my Ford and your Ford are different. And this is possible because of the innate expressive potential of VR combined with Boneworks' reactive body and physics-powered world. All of these elements come together to allow every player's real-world personality to be expressed in the game. That thing I mentioned earlier about giving that particular no man a wet willy? Not every player is gonna do that. I mean. You know, of course, why, why would anyone do that? Why did I do that? Every second of every person's playthrough of Boneworks is gonna be different, simple as that. I see a lot of people who play this game and who play Arthur Ford like a no-nonsense killer, all about the action. A bad motherfucker who headshots first and asks questions never because headshots are way more important than talking about shit. Me, on the other hand, my Ford was a little rascal, finger banging no man's ear canals and dropping trash cans on motherfuckers. It's just humiliating. This is undiluted player expression in its purest form. You are defining your version of Arthur Ford with every move you make. Every step you take. Isn't that a fucking police song? <laughs> Maybe your Arthur is clumsy, or skilled, or compassionate, or a fucking psycho. All of this personal expression feeds right back into the open level design as well. The type of player you are and the way you express yourself results in different solutions to every problem. As long as you're willing to have fun and get creative with it. Yeah, you could follow that path around the level to get the door open, or you could go nuts, climb the water tower, and skip the motherfucking warehouse in its entirety. It's just super cool to see how each individual person plays this shit and what solutions they find to the relatively straightforward problems the game presents you with, such as get from one end of this chamber to the other. Now, to rain on the nut parade for but a moment, not all the levels are as good as Warehouse. Some are more strictly linear than others, which isn't innately a bad thing, but it's just kind of lame going back to the more linear stuff after getting creative in the more open levels like Warehouse, Streets, or Tower. The Mechanics so, now that we've broken down Boneworks' core systems and level design, I want to take some time to delve into the details of the game's most interesting mechanics. The smaller systems that really fill out the experience and make these bones work. 
Have I used that one yet? It's too easy. We're gonna touch on the inventory system, climbing, weapons and combat, and uh, just how the game mind fucks you constantly. I have a list of mind fucks that I'm excited to share because I I just love a good list. Oh boy, happy how I love them. Uh, inventory. The last time I had this much fun with an inventory system was probably Resident Evil 4. I mean, inventory systems aren't exactly meant to be fun. They're more function than form, a necessary evil created by the fact that you gotta carry a lot of shit around in video games. This medium provides a beautiful escape where you can enact your most elaborate fantasies, but most importantly, You can carry more things around than normal. I know that's why I play video games. The menus! Boneworks' inventory system is dope as hell because it is creative, tactile, and it forces you to make hard decisions with its cleverly limited space. So as you might have pieced together at this point, you actually physically store objects on your person, utilizing two back holsters, two side holsters, and your one extra butthole pocket. The first way to access this inventory is by physically reaching around your body, grabbing over your shoulder to pull stuff off your back, or tugging sidearms out of your underarm holsters. The second method of interaction is holding a button to open a floating menu that shows off the five main slots right in front of you, allowing for easy access if you don't feel like fucking around and reaching over your shoulder and shit. But Thing is, items in the game are divided into two classes, big and small. A machine gun or a sledgehammer, for instance, they're big objects, so they can only fit in your top two shoulder slots. Small objects, on the other hand, can fit in all five slots, but they're generally items that are less useful in combat, like handguns, SMGs, or smaller melee weapons. Then you also have non-combat objects that you can store in your inventory, like keys, collectible props, and batteries. All items that come in handy navigating the world. You can also just hold stuff in your hands if your inventory is full. You know, just set your gun down on a nearby table while you crank a gear, or stab a dead body 17 times for no reason. Or, if you're a fucking 9000 IQ genius like myself, you can just find a shopping cart in one of the levels and store everything in there. Pushing that bitch around like you're going grocery shopping for DEATH! <laughs> what it comes down to is that you have a simple inventory system with multiple methods of interaction, both of which are innovative, fun, and functional. Combine those two modes with a smartly limited selection of spaces and you've got an inventory system that I actually enjoy engaging with. I look forward to something as simple as opening my inventory in this fucking game. I want to fuck this game! Like I mentioned a bit ago, it reminds me of Resident Evil 4. And not just in terms of how quality it is as a system, but also how it scratches that same obsessive organizational itch where I just gotta make sure everything's put in the right place. Ooh, this can go here, and this can go there, and now I can fit one extra object in my butthole! Climbing. I didn't climb things when I was a kid. I really only climbed a tree once, and it was to escape a dog that jumped somebody's fence and was trying to kill me. So you can imagine my excitement as I slowly realized over the course of the first three or so levels of Boneworks that you can basically climb anything in this game. No horrifying monster chase necessary, although that does happen sometimes. Pipes, tubes, fences, scaffolding, tubes, lots of tubes, tube works. Climbing shit in this game, getting creative with your navigation, or, or simply popping caps in motherfuckers while hanging 40 feet in the air just feels so goddamn good. I do also freely admit though, it's kinda jank. Sometimes your arms will do nightmare shit and it generally looks sorta wonky cause your legs just sit there looking like that maintenance man ghost meme, but it feels great and it works. And it leads to some very memorable and emergent gameplay possibilities, which is what's really important. The devs also use this climbing mechanic as a way to include an extensive homage to Snake Eater at the end of the game. That's also important. You climb a ladder for like three minutes straight and it's fucking riveting. The context here is very different though. The tone of the ladder sequence is transformed from a moment of quiet reflection to a moment of climactic triumph. Eventually clambering over the edge of this game's final platform felt like I'd really done something because I really had done something. My fucking delts were searing after waving my arms in the air for minutes on end like a jerk off. And no, I don't work out very much. Sincerely though, being able to physically experience the exhaustion set in after holding my arms aloft for multiple minutes was a special moment. The game really made me work for that ending. It's one of those many moments during Boneworks where the line between video game and reality became profoundly blurry due to some hella intelligent game design. I swear, if a motherfucker calls this shit a tech demo one more goddamn time! Tools of destruction. Combat feels great in Boneworks. Well, like 60% of combat feels great, 40% kinda sucks, but we're gonna start with the good shit because the good shit is good shit. And when I say good shit, I'm referring to the firearms. I haven't had this much fun with guns since modern warfare. No, scratch that. I haven't had this much fun with guns since I was running around the neighborhood shooting motherfuckers with airsoft rifles. 
which I would definitely get shot by cops if I tried to do that. Now, funnily enough, it seems like Brandon Lotch feels the same. He goes into his love of airsoft in a video where he describes the stress level zero's process of making VR guns. Great video, heavily recommend it. Hell, I recommend his whole channel because it's just filled with these gold nuggets of game design advice and info. Anyway, point I'm trying to make here is the main dev has a gun fetish, and that means the guns feel fucking spot on in just about every regard. The weight of each individual firearm feels appropriate. Cocking back the slide on each and every one of these bad boys is a sexual revelation. The feedback and kick of each gun works well, and of course aiming is responsive and intuitive because you just do what you do with a gun. A specific element of gunplay that really got my gooch was reloading. Oh my good god man, reloading in Boneworks is the most exciting it's been ever in anything because as previously mentioned, you can't just execute it with the press of a button anymore. In a vast majority of non-VR shooters, the reload is little more than a break between bullets. A window of vulnerability meant to briefly level the playing field between you and your enemies before you get back to blasting. In Boneworks, however, you can't just tap square to perform this complex action of D and re-clipping, nah. Instead, you have to remove the magazine, reach down to your waist, pull out a new mag, line up said mag with your gun, insert it, and cock back the slide. You know, like a gun. I don't think I have to tell you that this series of actions leaves a lot of room for error, which is something that becomes especially prevalent when you're attempting a reload in the midst of being hunted down by like 15 fighting wireframes. It is embarrassing the number of times I fumbled a reload in the heat of battle, but even though it was occasionally frustrating, it was always exciting and fun and funny, because fucking up your reload isn't even a gameplay possibility in like 95% of games. On top of Boneworks' reloading being an unusually entertaining mechanic at a base level, it it gets deeper, since you can execute a reload in at least three different ways, to my knowledge. You can manually pull the clip out, or you can release it through a radial menu, or you can smack your empty mag out of place using a new one like a true ass action man. On top of the previous on top of, there are even more fun things to do with guns. You can push open doors with them, you can smash wood planks with them, you can throw your empty clips at an enemy's head, you can feed a man your gun, and you can experience just how inconvenient dual wielding actually is when you die while trying to reload two guns at once. Here's a hint, don't do it. For the other half of the combat equation, we have melee combat, and that's a bit more rough than the range stuff for sure. There's a severe weightlessness to it, but I mean, that's kind of unavoidable. It's difficult to convince the human brain that you're swinging an ax when the ax that you're swinging is made entirely out of oxygen. Stabbing things feels good, uh, a little too good, kinda concerning how good it feels, but slashing or slicing enemies with bladed weapons feels more like you're smacking them with blunt objects. The feedback is weird, and it's hard to tell when you've really landed a good hit. So, yeah, the melee stuff is a tad wonky, due to the very nature of fighting something that you can't feel, but I don't think the problem here stems solely from the player. I also think the enemy design gets in the way of a wholly satisfying melee system. All the melee enemies' attacks and movements seem to be physics-based, meaning they don't rely on canned animations that repeat the exact same way every time. Which means you as a player don't really have any reliably scripted attack patterns to anticipate. While this design choice does feel appropriate due to the physics-based nature of the game and the mindless nature of the enemies, their endless flailing and non-stop advancing makes CQC feel like a waste of time and health to get into, especially when there are so many guns lying around. Engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat with more than, say, three enemies quickly becomes an absolute fuckfest because all they do is shamble towards you en masse and attempt to smack the goddamn sense out of you. There's no flow to it, it's purely chaotic where I feel like it could be a little more controlled. <laughs> SLZ's first attempt at a VR melee system is slightly rough, but in general I think it's off to a very good start. The guns feel fantastic, but we do need some more elaborate enemies with more varied and more melee friendly combat behaviors moving forward. And some tinkering needs to be done with the melee combat system in general to get it feeling right. But look, even if the melee combat system here isn't perfect, there is no way I can deny the pure badassery of being able to dual wield katanas against a horde of zombies. Jank or no jank, that's just too fucking awesome not to have fun with. The mind fucks. Now that we've boned up on the game's basic mechanics, let's get into the crazy shit. I'm about to present my list of mind fucks. And if you're watching this now and haven't played Boneworks yet, but still hold some interest in doing so yourself, I'd recommend skipping over this segment, because I'm about to extensively spoil and discuss some of the game's most out there moments. Moments that you'll want to see for yourself. So, skibbity skip skip skip. I'll give you a couple seconds to clear out. I'll give you a three, two, one, two, <clears throat> three, two, 
three, two, one. And here's the list! Everybody's excited. Hey. Starting with the simplest and least strenuous of the mind fucks, we simply have the sense of scale in these levels. I know like 90% of you motherfuckers are watching this on your phone, so you can't even begin to conceptualize what it feels like to be within these spaces, but man, through the magic of VR, the sense of scale is palpable. Every time I looked up or down, I just had to stop to admire how much I felt like I was in these places, and this is due to a combination of graphics and physics and sound and art and tech design. This game is firing on all cylinders throughout its whole fucking runtime, and in certain instances that really hits through the imposing sense of scale that Boneworks just fucking nails. The first time I looked up at the tower through the rain-slicked windows of Central Station, ah, god. Damn, I felt like I was playing Half-Life 2 in 2004. Moving on to number two, which is related to number one, we have taking a large fall for the first time. Yeah, that took some getting used to. Probably too late to say this, but if you get motion sick easily, you will never play this game, I'm sorry. The rate at which Boneworks heaves your ass around with no control of your own, it will have you brown bagging it in two minutes flat. This is also a game with zero fall damage outside of bottomless pits, so you're heavily encouraged to take these big jumps whenever you can. And honestly, climbing up shit exclusively to jump off shit is one of my favorite things to do in the game. Which is kind of surprising, because I would have expected jumping in VR to end up pretty much like this. <laughs> Next up, we have our first mid-tier Mindfuck, this part of the game. Next, we have the hole in the redacted chamber, a super surreal moment that really brought into focus just how sharp this game is. So if you complete all three loops in the redacted chamber DLC, you'll suddenly see a hole in the wall on the left side of the main room where there wasn't one before. You have to physically lean into this hole and look through it with one eye, which is cool in and of itself, but what you see through the hole is even cooler. It's... yourself? Do I really look like that? Is that my player model? Was the game recording my movements when I was fucking around in here earlier? Wait, what is happening right now? Is this dude gonna come in here? Is he gonna look over here and peek his little fucking head out the corner? And to be honest, nothing really ever comes of this hole in the end. You can never reach that other you, but this simple little Easter egg got my mind racing when I didn't understand the context of it. Because what it is, it's just a reference to, I think, the original model for the main character, and it's like just a play on on something from development, I don't know, but I didn't know that at the time, and I just experienced it as this brilliantly meta moment that gives you this deeply surreal, out-of-body experience feeling. Very David Lynch, very disquieting, and just... odd. Mindfuck number five goes to the Handgun Time Trial DLC, which, simply put, makes you feel like John Wick. Now keep in mind that in real life you look like a dumbass, but you feel like John Wick, and that's enough to make the list. This game is great for people who love to use their imagination, and again, aren't afraid of looking like a dumbass. Next up at number six, we have the medieval jail cell scene, which gets a big fuck no from me, thank you very much. Deep into Boneworks' campaign, you... Is it Boneworks or Boneworks's plural? I, I feel like I've been saying it wrong the whole time, I'm just gonna keep saying Boneworks's, I'm sorry. Deep into Boneworks' campaign, you end up basically escaping into a separate simulation called Fantasyland. But initially you don't have any idea what's going on, you just wake up in a cell with this motherfucker staring at you.
Oh, what up, son? Not into it. Seriously, the first time I went through this sequence, I was terrified of these guys. I was fully convinced that at any moment they were gonna lose their minds and jump my ass on some iRobot shit. Turns out they're actually all just really friendly. So I killed all of them. No, I actually didn't the first time. I just gave them all hearty handshakes and went on with my day. Couple of head slaps, some mouth play, nothing major. Oh, God. Okay, does that count as major? You guys cool with it? I like it, cut G. Last on the list, we have... These sons of bitches. So Boneworks includes an enemy called the Crablet. Yeah, it's a head crab. We all know that. It's fine. These things get introduced, I think, five levels into the story and are easily one of the highlights of the game. They're scary and fun to fight, and you can pick them up and smash them against the wall, which you can't do in Half-Life Alex. No real point in bringing that up other than I played Alex after Boneworks and not being able to pick up head crabs and just mash them against the wall, like, disappointed me to my core. I chased a head crab around for five minutes. I felt like a dipshit. Anyway, much like the head-based crabs of yore, the crablet's main behavior is to pounce directly at your and luckily, I managed to avoid this attack for at least three or four levels. It finally happened though. I was in the middle of fighting a lone crablet at some point later in the game, and it got the drop on me. I was looking around trying to find it, swinging my head around in all directions, when suddenly... I was somewhere else. I was in a room. A totally new space. And oh my god, this thing is on my head! I didn't piece it together until this very moment, but these little guys are sentient VR helmets with legs. And when they mount themselves on your head, what you're seeing is the cushy inside of their VR stomach as they slice your neck to ribbons with their blade arms. When these fucking things land on you, you are wearing a VR helmet in VR. You're two layers deep in virtual reality, motherfucker. God damn! This is the most legitimately cyberpunk shit you can experience in this day and age. And when I say that, I don't mean that Boneworks is aesthetically cyberpunk. I mean that it's like software from a cyberpunk universe. It is tangible cyberpunk material in 2021. It's starting, guys! These simple little enemies are fucking genius. They're meta as shit, and if all that doesn't constitute a mind fuck, I don't know what possibly could. In conclusion... Every couple of years, if I'm lucky, I'll discover a game that really sticks with me. Last one I can remember was 2017, Near Automata. Game had me weeping with nothing but text and a couple of button presses in the middle of a goddamn boss fight. And I felt a similar excess of emotion pouring out of me during my time with Boneworks, albeit for very different reasons. Living in the dream of Myth OS, soaking in the creativity and ingenuity and passion and excitement that this game was so clearly built with fills my bones with the type of emotion that can only be expressed through, like, ugly tears, or shouting, or weird dinosaur noises. If you haven't played Boneworks yet, do it as soon as feasibly possible, because I give this game my highest recommendation. You will put on that Videodrome-ass Technotron device and you will come back an evolved being, and I'm thinking maybe I'm overselling it, maybe this game was just special to me, I don't know. This is a very subjective video you're watching, your partner. But the best thing about Boneworks is that most likely, it is only the beginning. This game feels like the start of something massive. This feels like the first stone kicked down a mountain that will inevitably result in a landslide of groundbreaking virtual reality content. When exactly that will happen, I don't know, but Stress Level Zero is already deep in development on what they're calling Project 4, another game set within their connected universe, and I can only assume there are at minimum five other game developers putting together VR titles that are at least slightly inspired by the majesty of Boneworks. We as a community of developers and players are just starting to comprehend the limits of VR, or lack thereof. But uh, to bring it back to the topic at hand, as to put a capper on today's discussion, uh, I guess what it all comes down to is...
Hello, I'm Christopher Jane, president of Memory X International. Try Memory X now. It's going to improve your memory. I guarantee it. Memory X contains a wealth of nutrients and vitamins that by improving your body. Take your body. Try Memory X. It will improve your memory. I guarantee that on my Try Memory X. It will improve your memory. And don't forget. Not remember these lines. Let's just do season two. I got this. Stay sharp. Be active. Be the best you can be. Don't leave anything up to chance. Love your body. Hard bodies. Body time. Let's go. And if that wasn't enough, we'll also send you this plush holiday themed toy. It's my favorite. I love it. I just cannot for the life of me remember why I'm holding this right now. Why am I holding this right now, Terry? It's it's the gift that you give. Terry, cut the riffraff! Memory t memory's gonna Terry, I just can't I can't get over this right now. It's gonna be. You're gonna improve your memory. You're gonna stay sharp. You're gonna tell oh, the silly thing right now. I can't believe I was given lines. That are just so complicated. That are just so complicated to read. We didn't even write them, Christopher. You wrote them. For crap! I bother taking this, Terry. It doesn't work. I'm but a professional during this, all of this, Terry. Do this. It's not. I'm so sick and tired. Of people telling me it's my fault. Memory X has been certified by doctors far and clear. You need to take your memory problems and smash them up.